For the safety of our younger riders, we ask that the adults with them place themselves on the outside of the row. If it's not practical, make sure that they are held or easily within your reach. Also, we ask that you do not stand up and move around whatsoever while the train is in motion, keeping your head, hands, and feet inside the cars at all times. Eating and drinking is not permitted, but water from an enclosed water bottle is just fine. We're heading over to the Smith's Creek Station to sit down and enjoy your ride. Thank you. All aboard! Thank you for our new conductors that are aboard our train. Thank you. We're training them for now. Goodbye to Mike, our station master. You did a great job getting everybody on board, Mike. Appreciate it. Just over to our left is the Susquehanna Plantation. Back in the day, it was uh, 700 acres big, and tobacco was the cash crop. It was built in 1854 from St. Mary's County, Maryland, and the Carroll family were the people that owned the plantation. They also owned 65 slaves that worked the plantation. Go inside and listen to a presenter tell you about the hardships that the slaves endured while working for the Carroll family who only benefited from all the hard work they did. Next to that is the Pimpton family home. It's the oldest home that we have here at Greenville Village, built in the 1650s from Sudbury, Massachusetts. Mr. and Mrs. Pimpton raised seven children in that single room home. Imagine that. Step inside and see how they could have done it. The Ferris windmill was built in 1650. It's from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. It was a gift to Henry Ford. It happens to be the oldest standing windmill in the United States. The Blanket Family Bunkhouse comes from Andover, Connecticut. And it was built in 1754 before the American Revolutionary War. And then we have our presenter out there working the raised garden beds. He'll give you lots of tips about how it's and working horses that are used to pull the carriage rides over at our village. There's just a few here getting a little rest and relaxation. The other ones have been put to work. The locomotive pulling our trip today is called the Edison. It was originally built in 1870s, but it had gone into disrepair. When Henry Ford found it, he had completely remodeled, re redone, and by the time he finished it in 1932, he named it Edison after his dear friend Thomas Edison. We also have the Torch Lake locomotive here at the village. It's in the roundhouse right now. It was built in 1873. It happens to be the oldest running steam locomotive in the country that runs on a regular schedule. We also have the Baldwin number no. 7 that was built in 1897. It was Henry Ford's favorite locomotive. He used it for his passenger cars. some wildlife. We've seen some deer, wild turkey a little uh, earlier today, and maybe some rabbits and some raccoons might pop their heads out. That what you just saw is called a blowdown. The engineer just released some uh, steam from the locomotive, from the boiler. And by doing so, a lot of minerals and other deposits are released, keeping that boiler clean as possible. At the end of 30 days, it'll go into the roundhouse where they will empty all the water from the boiler and do a complete...
to honor those who lost their lives while fighting in the Civil War. And it was in 1971 when it became a federal holiday and celebrated every May at the last Monday of the month. The holiday commemorates the Americans' military personnel who gave their lives in not only the Civil War, but World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Hopefully during this weekend and on Memorial Day, you'll remember and honor the sacrifices the men and women have made for us to keep our country free. In front of us is the Walnut Grove area. Nothing says summer like baseball, and our baseball season here will begin on this very field, June 18th. The Latinas and the Nationals, our home team, will be playing other Midwestern teams. They play according to the rule book of 1867, dressed in uniforms and using equipment from that same time period as well. First pitch is at 1.30. If you are coming, be sure to pack a blanket or some lawn chairs so you can come in and share in on the baseball game. We will have games here all the way to the third week of August. Hope you can join in and help us lead our teams to victory. In front of us is the Henry Ford Youth, um, Academy High School built in 1997. 10th through 12th graders have classes here. Ninth graders are over at the museum. It was Henry Ford who said, learning to do is by doing. Students can take what they studied in the classroom and take it into the museum or village and see firsthand what they studied. These vintage bullpen cars are always reserved for our privileged senior class who will be leaving us in the middle of June. To be a student here at the Henry Ford Academy High School, one must live in Wayne County, Michigan. After submitting an application, it's the luck of the draw that your application will be pulled so that you can attend high school here for four years of tuition free. Should you be getting off? 